will attempt to land on our drone ship, just read the instructions, which as you see there on your screen, is currently parked out in the Atlantic Ocean. Landing a booster is a bit like flying a pencil over the Empire State Building and trying to land it on a shoebox on the other side, in the middle of a windstorm. Falcon 9 is in startup. At this point in time, stage one and stage two are beginning to pressurize for launch. Go for launch. And there we just heard our launch director give the final go for launch tonight. We're currently at T minus 35 seconds and all systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 with the Astro 1P satellite. Let's listen in on the final moments of the launch countdown. T-minus 15, T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, and lift off, go SpaceX, go Astro 1P. We're at T minus 30, or excuse me, T plus 33 seconds and counting. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying the Astro 1P satellite. After clearing the tower, we tilted or gimbaled the engines to initiate a roll maneuver. Power and telemetry nominal. And you may notice that in the Stage 1 camera view, this enables the vehicle's antennas to stay in the best position for communicating with the ground. In just a few seconds, we're going to be throttling down the engines in preparation for max Q, which stands for the maximum aero, the moment of max, maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. And there we heard that call out. As Falcon 9 accelerates through the thicker lower atmosphere, that air density decreases. Falcon 9 passes max Q once the air density lowers faster than the increasing speed of the vehicle. You can keep your eye on the stage one telemetry there in the bottom left hand side of your screen and keep an eye on those speed changes through ascent. Now the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to earth and, uh, and therefore get into orbit. In about 30 seconds, we're going to have uh, a number, three events coming up uh, that will happen all in succession quite quickly, starting with main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and second engine start one, or SES-1. Not to be confused with today's customer, SES. As the name suggests, main engine cutoff is where we shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage. Beautiful views coming from the Stage 1 booster. Coming up on Miko now. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. And there you heard and saw those events happening back to back. The next event we have coming up is fairing separation. We will attempt to retrieve, excuse me, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves once again as they fall back to earth and we will do so with our recovery vessel, Bob. As a reminder, Astro 1P, our payload today, is a wide beam broadcasting satellite with 80 KU band transponders for broadcasters and content owners across large TV markets in Germany, Spain, and France. Fairing separation confirmed. 
And there we just heard confirmation of that fairing separation. And perhaps you caught a peek of it as well. Actually, you can see one of those fairing halves falling away in the background behind the MVAC engine there on the right-hand side of your screen. Nominal trajectory. Now the next event we have coming up around T plus six and a half minutes will be uh, the first stage entry burn that will be conducted by the booster, which is the left-hand side view on your screen. And that will be the first of two burns that the first stage will perform in order to land back on Earth. You can see the first stage is actually still very slowly, but a little bit gaining um, slight altitude. Looks like it might be peaking right now. The first stage continues to do so for several moments uh, after stage separation and we can see there now that it is beginning to, uh, it has reached its apogee and we'll begin to see the altitude decrease, meaning it was beginning its return back to Earth. Everything continues to look nominal for the second stage on the right-hand side of your screen. A gorgeous daylight view of planet Earth behind that MVAC engine. To start the entry burn, we will relight three M1D engines, which is similar to pumping the brakes in order to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. The entry burn actually helps to reduce the heat generated from the friction of the atmosphere itself and reduces the aerodynamic forces that are acting on Falcon, which in turn helps maintain controlled flight and prepare for the landing burn. Less than a minute until that entry burn. Now during that entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, as I said, but still obviously moving very fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through the exhaust gas of the Merlin engines, and that deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little bit more on the outside of the vehicle. That's why some of the reused boosters have a little bit more color on them than the newer uh, ones that are still have a... Stage uh, 1 FTS has saved. Than the newer Stage 1 entry burn startup. And there we can see on the left-hand side of your screen that entry burn has begun. We can see that speed really decelerating now on the left hand, in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Again, this is the first stage and is the first of two burns that it will execute in this entry landing burn maneuver. Shut down. There we can see and heard that entry burn has concluded. And we can see how those grid fins help steer the vehicle for a precise landing. Once again, we are targeting our drone ship, which is currently parked in the Atlantic Ocean. And the drone ship we're using today is just read the instructions. Less than a minute for landing of the first stage booster. Everything continues to look great for the second stage carrying the Astra 1P satellite. Right around the same time that we're performing that landing burn stage on the first one, stage, well, that call out tells us that the first stage is traveling near the speed of sound. Now, right around the same time as the landing burn, we're going to hear a call out for MVAC shutdown or SECO uh, second engine cutoff one. Stage two FTS has saved. Terminal guidance. It looks like we have a pretty clear view of the targeted landing area, so if you look closely, you might be able to see our drone ship come into view. Stage one landing burn. There we can see the drone ship in picture. Landing burn initiated. And back shot down. Landing leg deploy.
stage one landing confirmed. An incredible view from two different angles. As you can see, Falcon 9 has landed once again, marking our 320th, orbit. 320th successful landing of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. It's also the 250th time that we've recovered a booster on a drone ship. Pretty cool. For its second, second ignition, or SES-2, second engine start two. You can see that the speed is beginning, or once again, increasing, as well as the altitude, following along with the stage two telemetry GUI on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. This will last another few seconds. This was just a short one minute burn of the MVAC engine. Standing by for Seco 2, second engine cutoff 2. Good orbit insertion. All right. As you can see on your screen, we did have successful cutoff of that MVAC engine, and we also heard the call out there uh, for a good orbit. 